Welcome to Islam 101, a program in which we're going to do our best to give a clear and concise understanding and explanation about the basics of the religion of Al Islam, its tenets, its beliefs, its practices. I'm your host, Abu Usama Al Dahabi, and I welcome all of you from our respected viewers as well as our guests. Today we're going to deal with an extremely important hadith from the hadith of Rasulullah Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this word that you hear, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is simply me sending the peace and the praises upon our prophet and our messenger, as we do for all of the prophets and messengers in Al-Islam. So we're going to use some Islamic terms, and I'll do my best when I use the Arabic terms to translate them. But if I forget, I hope, from the context of what I'm saying, all of you would understand what is implied. Concerning today's topic, we're going to deal with an authentic hadith that's been collected by an Imam Muslim, and we'll explain in the future, inshallah, God willing, what is it, the hadith, and the role that the hadith plays in Al-Islam. This is the hadith that's been narrated by that illustrious companion, that tremendous personality in Al-Islam, that individual who every single Muslim man, woman, and child owes a great deal of gratitude to for the role that he has played in the history of our religion. And that is none other than Abu Hafs, Umar ibn al-Khattab al-Faruq, sallallahu ta'ala anhu. Umar said that one day he was sitting in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the peace and blessings of Allah be upon our prophet and messenger when out of nowhere there appeared a man. The man, his hair was exceedingly black, his clothes were exceedingly white and no one could detect upon him the fact that he was a traveler. Umar said, even though this was the case, no one from amongst us knew him. If he was from Medina, then someone should have known him. If he was from the city where the companions were living, then someone should have known him. Since no one knew him, it would suggest that he was a traveler. Well, if he was a traveler, at least they should have seen on him the effects of traveling. You would think that his hair would have been disheveled, his clothes would have been dirty. He was wearing a white fold, white clothes. So it was strange the fact that the man appeared in this situation. So it caused everyone to look at him and to take stock of his situation. So, what did he do? The man got close to the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, and he sat down on his knees. He put his knees to the knees of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which goes to show the humility of Prophet Muhammad. There are many people who are in positions of authority. The mudir, a person who's in a position, he's a president, he's the leader of a company, leader of a tribe. They don't want people to get close to him. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed a perfect stranger to come and put his knees close to the knees of the last messenger and prophet. So that is a lesson for every Muslim to show us. None of us are better than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have to make a conscious effort to be people who are humble. That's one of the benefits of this hadith. So the man put his knees to the knees of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and took the palms of his hands and placed the palms of his hands on the thighs of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, Ya Muhammad. He called him by his name, his first name. And everyone knows, as Muslims, we have been taught in our religion to respect people of authority and people of position. Even Allah said in the Quran, لا تجعلوا دعاء الرسول بينكم كالدعاء بعدكم بابا. Don't call Rasulullah the way you call each other. I call you, Ya Ilman, Ya Muhammad, Ya Abdullah. We don't call Rasulullah like that. We say, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Nabi Allah. That's how we address people of position. But this man said, Ya Muhammad, tell me, what is Al-Islam? 
You are the representative of this religion. What you say is the religion. Not what someone else says or some, what someone else has done. What you say is the religion. So what is al-Islam? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said, al-Islam is that you bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. He did not say bear witness that there is no God but Allah. So we have to take this opportunity out to stress this point. It is a wrong and incorrect and improper translation to say la ilaha illallah means there is no God but Allah. No. La ilaha illallah means there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. Jesus is a God to some people. Money is a God to other people. A woman may love her husband so much that she takes him as a God. Power is a God. So, la ilaha illallah means there's no God worthy of worship but Allah. So he said al-Islam is that you should bear witness there's no God worthy of worship but Allah and that you establish the five prayers every day and that you give the zakat, the poor do. And that you fast in the blessed month of Ramadan, which is the ninth month in the Islamic lunar calendar. And number five, that you make the sojourn and the pilgrimage to Mecca for the Hajj. The questioner said, you have spoken the truth and you got it right. Umar radiallahu anhu, the narrator of the hadith, he said, we found it strange that the man would ask a question and then he would say to Rasulullah, you got it right. One of the benefits of this, Rasulullah being, being told by Jibril, you got it right. One of the benefits of that is that if you are a parent, a mother or a father, and you find that your child, he does something good, you're a teacher in the university, in high school, grammar school, if the student gets it right, it is highly recommended that you praise him and you say to him, you've gotten it right, because it will increase the desire in that student to be a good student. He said, you got it right. Now tell me, what is Al-Iman? Ya Muhammad, tell me, explain to me. You're the representative of Al-Islam. You're the one, the Nabi, the Rasul, the Prophet, the Messenger, the representative of the religion. What is Al-Iman? Prophet Muhammad, peace, be in, peace of Allah be upon him, he said, Al-Islam is, or Al-Iman, faith is that you believe in Allah and that you believe in all of the angels and that you believe in the books that were revealed by Allah. And you believe in the prophets and the messengers that those books were revealed upon. And that you also believe in the last day, Yom al Qiyamah. That Allah has created us as human beings and everyone is going to taste death. And then there's going to be a final day in which you're going to be asked and questioned. Why did you do this and why didn't you do that? You have to believe in that. And number six, that you have to believe in the Qadr. And the Qadr is the divine decree that everything has been predestined and preordained before it even happened. The questioner said, you had it right. You answered correctly. Now tell me, Ya Muhammad, what is Al-Ihsan? Who is the Muhsin? What is Al-Ihsan? Perfection. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Ihsan is that you worship Allah as if you see Him. And even though you don't see Him, know for surety that Allah sees you. He said, you got it right. Now I have another question. Can you inform me, when is the hour, when is the sa'a, Yom al Qiyamah, the last day, when is it going to be established? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, another sign of his humility. He would not answer a question that he doesn't know the answer to, even though he is Rasulullah and the Khatim al-Anbiya wa Rasul. He is the last prophet and the last message. But if he didn't know, he would tell people he didn't know. Because only Allah knows everything. No angel, no prophet, no human being, no imam, no intelligent man, no scholar knows everything. Only Allah. So when they asked, he was asked that question, when is the hour, the last day? He said, the one who was being questioned, meaning me, Muhammad, knows just as much as the one who was being, doing the questioning. You know just as much. You know just as much. The people in our listening audience, they know just as much as to the answer of this question than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of us are equal in this issue.